Hello fellow booktubers, my name is Lauren, you're watching Dreams Books Courage, and today I'm doing my January wrap up. I'm sorry to you guys that this video is quite late in the month, but I've just been feeling under the weather. I'm not sure if you can tell because of my voice, but I'm so glad to be back and filming some more videos. So let's go ahead and get into the five books that I read in the month of January. They were all vastly different types of books, and so I'm really excited to talk about the different types of books that I read in January. First up, we have my ebook of the month that I read on my beautiful little Kindle, and that book was five Five Nights at Freddy's, The Silver Eyes by Scott Cawthon and Kira Breed Risley. And that probably sounds to you guys like a very weird book to start off my new year. And it really was for me because I planned on finishing that book within 2015, but obviously I just ran out of time and it was alright to start off my new year, although I wish I would have started off with a book that I was like more excited to read for the new year. But as I talked about in my January TBR video, I picked this book up because I really love the Five Nights at Freddy's lore that goes around the video game franchise, and so of course I wanted to read a book by the developer. So basically my main point of reading this book was to find some more answers to answer a lot of the questions that kind of aren't really answered within the series. And honestly, I feel like I didn't really have a lot of those questions answered. I did find the story to be enjoyable still because I do really love Five Nights at Freddy's. And so it was really interesting to see that franchise be told in kind of a very different light. I know that Scott Cawthon said something along the lines of that his work was so misconstrued by now. He just kind of wanted to make an entirely new story based around the franchise. And so that's basically what this book was. And it definitely did its job of making a completely different story to it. From what I can tell, Kira Brudrisley is actually just kind of kind of like a ghostwriter who actually wrote the book. Although I might be wrong, I'm pretty sure that seemed pretty right. Going along with the fact that Scott is a game developer and he's not really into making novels. But still, there were numerous grammar and spelling errors throughout this book. And although that's not like the biggest concern for me, I definitely did notice it. And I felt that it was kind of weird to have all those errors considering that he had a ghostwriter. But overall, I still really enjoyed reading this. I thought it was just kind of a fun and kind of quick story, although there were some scenes that were kind of unnecessary. I did find it enjoyable, and if you enjoy the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise, I would recommend this. But still, don't expect to get all of your questions answered around the series. I ended up giving this one 3 out of 5 stars. The next novel I did not actually plan on picking up in the month of January. And really, I didn't really know that this book existed until until I had to pick it up for class. And that book is My Antonia by Willa Cather, which is actually quite a famous novel. But this novel is just not the type that I myself would pick up just because it's kind of like set on the frontier. And that's just not really something that I enjoy learning about. But I am glad that I did end up picking this one up. This story takes place on the frontier and it takes place from the character of Jim. Jim ends up moving to Nebraska, which is like the frontier at that point in time. And he meets a girl named Antonia. And so it kind of follows Antonia's life through the eyes of Jim. Antonia is a girl from Bohemia and so being an immigrant from so far away and from such a different place was just a very interesting thing to read since there were so many immigrants at the time and really you could consider most people that were living in America at the time to be immigrants. I just found this to be a very interesting look on life and also a look at America whenever Nebraska was actually the frontier and the West was still being formed. I ended up enjoying this novel way more than I thought I would and I really enjoyed Willa Cather's writing style as well. I'm not sure what else she has written but if you guys have any recommendations for me for Willa Cather definitely leave those down below. I ended up giving this novel 4 out of 5 stars. And the next novel is one that I have been waiting and waiting for it to come out. And then the release date happened and I still hadn't read it until January. And that book of course is Queen of Shadows by Sarah J Maas which is the fourth book in the Throne of Glass series. I don't want to say too much about it since you guys probably already know what Throne of Glass is about, but if you have not started the series yet, definitely start it, definitely read it, please. You'll be doing a service to yourself. It is just such an amazing fantasy read. Even if you don't like fantasy, definitely try this one out. Sarah J Maas is my second favorite author, so obviously she can do very little wrong in my eyes. I feel like every time I read a Sarah J Maas novel, it just becomes my new favorite of hers, and so that's exactly what happened with Queen of Shadows. My favorite was Air Fire, and then I read Queen of Shadows, and I somehow loved it even more, which is kind of impossible to do. But as I'm sure you've heard a lot of people say, things I wanted to happen happened, and also things that I didn't even know I wanted to happen happened, and I loved all of them. I just really love where all of the characters are at the end of this novel, and it was definitely worth every single page of reading 650 pages. It was just such a beautifully done novel, I just loved everything about it. 
There's so much character growth and development throughout the series. The only thing that I was personally sad about was that I did not reread all of the books before since it has been quite a while since I first read them, but it was fun and I found it very, very easy to get back into the story. But also, if you guys want to read Queen of Shadows, I would definitely, definitely recommend that you read the bind up of novellas, which is called The Assassin's Blade first because a lot of things go on in there that are also mentioned in Queen of Shadows, and so the fact that I hadn't read The Assassin's Blade in so long kind of messed me up. But definitely make sure that you read every single book before you pick this one up. So much goes on in it, and it's all amazing and spectacular and everything I wanted. And so of course I gave this one 5 out of 5 stars, and I would not be surprised if this one ended up on my favorites list or if it got in first place. The next book we have is my audiobook of the month, and that was Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. And this really did satisfy everything I wanted this novel to be. Basically what it is is a self-help guide to being able to wake up in the morning and feel just like refreshed and rejuvenated. And I feel like it offers a lot of good tips, although I have not yet followed them. I just have such a huge issue of waking up in the morning on time. And so although I feel like this would really work for like anyone, and I do recommend it if you do want a really good way to wake up earlier. The way it's formatted makes you wake up even earlier than you want to, and although that's probably a great idea for me to do and many others to do, I just really find it very hard hard for me to think about it in that way of being able to get up early and like feeling good about it. I really need to try it and I really know I do, but if you do want to find an effective way of getting up earlier in the morning, although I have not yet tried it, this does seem like a very good starting point. And I would recommend it if you do have problems with kind of getting up in the morning earlier. I really need to try this stuff out to see for myself. But from the tips it gave, I felt like it was a very sound argument for it. So I ended up giving this one 4 out of 5 stars. And the last thing that I read in the month of January was actually my graphic novel of the month. And that is Lumberjanes Volume 1, Beware the Kitten Holy, which is written by Noelle Stevenson and Grace Ellis, and is illustrated by Brooke Allen. I ended up quite enjoying this one, although it's not my favorite graphic novel. Here's an example of what the art style looks like. And from what I saw from the cover, I thought the art style would be very much so different. Although it was still a good art style, I was just very confused at first because I thought that the art style would more mirror Noel Stevenson's art style. Either way, I still enjoyed it. It was very colorful and lively. And I also enjoyed the writing, although this is probably meant for a more middle grade audience. This is such a diverse comic, both dealing with sexuality and also race. The characters are all very diverse people, and I just really enjoyed that. And I feel like this would be a really great thing to read in middle school school, but I personally still really enjoyed it and I'm definitely going to pick up the next issue as well. It definitely brought me back to my Girl Scout years, although obviously mine were not as hectic and adventurous as these. I did really enjoy this and I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes. I give this one 4 out of 5 stars. So those are all of the things that I read in the month of January. I feel like I had a pretty good and diverse reading month and I'm very happy with what I did manage to read. Thank you guys so much for watching and now I'm going to go get back to reading.